Hey everyone, Chuck Crossway here at Premium Beat. If you haven't seen my last video, you can find it here where I talked about manual focus. I also gave out tips for people who are looking for AC work. And this week, I wanted to stay in the same vein, but shift my focus to something else, and I decided on dollies. There's doorway dollies, there's Dana dollies. Um, I picked one of the best dollies around. The interesting thing about this dolly is that you can't buy it, is that you can't lease it. The only thing you can do is rent it from a rental house. Now, this is the Fisher dolly, and if you ever find yourself on set, you may not have the money, the insurance, or the ability to have one to practice on. So I wanted to make this tutorial video to help train you for the next time you might need to use a Fisher dolly. Let's check it out. Today I'm here at the amazing MPS Studios in Dallas, Texas. I'm here with John Beasley, and he's a certified Fisher Dolly technician. And today we're gonna go through everything you need to know about the Fisher Dolly and how to operate it. John, if you don't mind. So before you do any of the major functions of the dolly, you have to make sure there's a charge in it. So you're able to boom the arm up and down and to be able to shift gears. And this is your main uh, steering post. And right here is your brake knob and down is when the brakes are locked and it will not go anywhere. And to release the brakes, you just pull up and you can push it forward or backward and turn and everything. They, each Fisher Dolly has three forms of steering. The main conventional one is rear, and this shifter knob right here is in the middle. So right now we're in rear, and just the back wheels can turn 360 degrees. Now another way to steer, a form of steering is round. So to get in round, you push the shifter all the way to the right and go back as far as you can go. So right now it's in round, and then round all, all the wheels can turn 360 degrees. And the third uh, form of steering is called crab, and it's basically exactly what it sounds like. So to do that, you go all the way to the right and go as far as you can go and it's just like a crab, you can go left and right. Perfect. And right here is the boom <coughs> mechanism. And to turn, if you turn it left, the dolly arm will boom up. And to turn right, the dolly arm will boom down, like so. Awesome. A really interesting feature about the Fisher dolly is that you can actually set marks for your boom positions. So uh, all you need is a grease pencil. And then if you come down here, you can actually set a line for your start. And then as you start to change the boom position, as the camera goes up, you can actually set your end mark. So this allows you to hit your marks every time. So to be able to boom the arm or shift gears or anything, the dolly has to have a charge. And to charge the dolly, you can use this AC or DC power. Right now I'm using DC power, and you can use anywhere between 90 and 240 volts. So you take your stinger, and you plug it in right at the back of the dolly here, and you flip this switch on, and the dolly will automatically cut off when it has its full charge. It's my understanding, actually, that if you ever find yourself in a dire straits, that you can actually hand pump the Fisher dolly to charge it. Is that is that true? Yeah, if you ever don't have any access to any power, you can grab one of these push posts right here and place it right on this and just pump it, hand pump it back and forward until you have enough charge to be able to do the move that you need to do. Okay, so how are we going to get this whole, this monster up on this track? Well first, luckily right now we're in the studio, so the ground's pretty level. So I'm just going to use a few wedges to shore up the track to help prevent some uh, bumps. Okay. So I'm just going to slide them under here. And is this a pretty quick way to try and get an even level? Yes, uh, sometimes you can get uh, pretty crazy with the leveling uh, with apple boxes or you know, aluminum beans. I mean, there's a million 
different ways to achieve it, but having the track level is always important because it's easier on you as the dolly grip because you won't have to be pushing uphill or if it's you're going downhill and you let it go and you know then you're updating your resume because you're not on that show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So right now we have circle track and there's two main ways to put uh, the dolly on the track. And the first way which I'm going to show you is with the track wheels which I've already put on the dolly and they kind of have a groove cut out in them so the dolly just pushes right up on the track and stays there. So you get these starter wedges and you put them in and then you align the dolly up. Do we need to watch out for this cable? Okay, so you crab over and then you get it lined up with the outside of the circle track wheels, the track wheels? Yes, sir. And you want it to be in rear mode when you go up on the track. So right now I'm on rear. I'm just gonna push up on the track. And voila. The cool thing about the, the track having the track wheels on is you can utilize the brake and walk away. That's great. So this is how the dolly would get on the skate wheels, the skate trays. Um, so usually you'd want about four people to do it, but sometimes you do have to do it by yourself. So you have these carry handles right here that'll go in the front of the dolly, and then you just lift it up and set the wheels on the skate trays. So what would you say the advantages of using the skate wheels are? Well, to me, the biggest advantage is, is they're so precise and smooth that it makes this 500 pound dolly feel like a feather. And it's just so easy to push. And I mean, you can see, like I'm just using one finger and pulling this whole dolly. So you can make really, really precise moves on these skate wheels. But once again, let's say you have a different elevation, maybe on different sides of the track, your brake's not gonna work, obviously. Yes, you cannot, do, that's the only downfall is you can't utilize the brakes but technically, if the track is level, you don't, right, like it is now, you won't need the brakes because it won't drift. And you can use grip clips or your car unions or something to put on the end of the track just in case. All right, thank you. So what do you think are the advantages of using a dolly and what do you like about the Fisher itself? The advantages of having a dolly on set, it, you know, is speed. A lot of it has to do with speed, whether you're on track or not you can place the camera way quicker than if you had a set of sticks and you're lifting and everything. With the dolly, you can just boom up, down, go right, left very easily. And how many people can fit on a Fisher whenever you're operating it? Uh, as Speaking as a dolly grip, preferably none, but uh, usually like two is probably the max. Copy that. Okay, it's been an amazing time here at MPS Studios in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for your time, John. Yeah, of course. Thank you for coming. And uh, that's it for the Fisher Dolly, but we're going to head back to the office so we can wrap things up. That was my tutorial on the Fisher Dolly and how to be a dolly grip. Now, the Fisher Dolly may not match your production. This video was really meant to try and get you ready to be a dolly grip if you ever find yourself looking for that type of work. And the Fisher Dolly is one of the most used, one of the most common things that you would find as a dolly grip but you can always tailor your equipment to your production. Let's say you don't have the money, the budget, or the insurance to rent a Fisher dolly. Well, you can get a doorway dolly, you can get a Dana dolly, or you can build one of these. Logan actually has already done a tutorial on how to build one of these. You can find it right here. Take this bad boy out, slap it on some PVC pipe, and you've got your own DIY dolly. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe, please comment. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.